So, better understanding of diseases, early prevention, treatment, and also personalized treatment, that all make us live longer. Many of us hear that we're going to probably live beyond the age of 100. So how do we make sure those prolonged years is going to be productive, endurable, and also productive? So these are really the big questions that we need to ask. And in the future, it is anticipated that the assistive device is going to be all around us. It's going to be pervasive, and we are all going to use this to enhance our you know, perception and also enhance our motor capabilities and all the others. But how do we make sure that those technologies can be used effectively? And we all know when we live longer that we are going to live with one kind of chronic disease and also that the ability, for instance, musculoskeletal power, ability even to hold things and all these things are going to achieve. So for, with this, that you need to use a number of things. Sensing is one of them that uh, we talk about uh, you know, prevention and also early detection. And in fact, in hospital environment that we are using all these things all the time, what's the problem? They're all episodic. They only provide a snapshot of what's going on, whereas use sensors that you'll be able to provide continuous monitoring, and therefore from the trend that you'll be able to predict what's going on. And in fact, we are developing a lot of these devices. For instance, microchips are getting smaller, and we can make those devices to be so small that you can integrate them into artifacts, personal artifacts, earrings for the ladies, you know, and also that uh, cufflinks and all those things can have the function of monitoring and also be able to provide warning and ultimately change behavior for lifestyle diseases. And these are some of the devices that many of you perhaps are using and also in fact some of the inventors are here, that the wearables to your right and also those implantables to your left. And all these devices have this integrated uh, unknown processing and also be able to communicate with those uh, things. But how likely all these devices will become reality in managing our elderly care well, we are all using smart apps and also using those devices for changing our lifestyle and also giving us our devices and also advices. And a few years ago, 10 years ago, this is unconceivable. But now it's all happening. And we are using this, and many of you are probably using one of those devices to monitor your lifestyle. But sensing is one thing. You also need to interact and also help you. So robots, that's what we come in. And in surgery, we are already using surgical robots to help in, in terms of performing microsurgery, for instance, help with trimmer and also provide you with superhuman capabilities. And this is really that one of the areas that, uh, you know, where robots will come in. Of course, this is one type of uh, connotation that in terms of how the robot will interact with the human and from a mechanical sense, but you can do it more subtly. You can do it more seamlessly in terms of human-robot interaction. And in a way, you don't need to expose this technology per se. You can use smart fabrics, for instance, change the stiffness that support you to help the elderly to lift them up that when they leave the chair and also to help them stand and also managing Parkinson's patients in terms of tremors and so on. So embodiment, development in material science, development in sensing, and also development in terms of design. And all these things are happening. And for managing, for instance, that uh, disabled people, for soldiers, that those technologies are already happening. And also that using the uh, you know, uh, neuroprosthetics and also stimulation. So where's the future lies? Are we going to develop ourselves into a cyborg and we are just going to flood ourselves with all the sensors? Or the direction we are pursuing is going to be making sure the technology is pervasive. No stigma that you can use all this. In fact, that those things is already happening that for elite athletes, for instance, that for those you know, elite athletes, in this case, that in this, uh, you know, using this, they're already to start to compete, compete with normal athletes. And this is really that you know, uh, the boundary is really blurring between what we have in a hospital environment, what we are doing today in terms of care, and in future, you can use sensing and also robots actually to provide home-based care and also community-based care. And the boundary is really merging together, and this is really something that will support our elder life. So with all this, then what are the economic you know, challenges and also social challenges we have to deal with? And in terms of how do we make sure those technologies are developed appropriately and also to really to help us to have a productive, prolonged life? So with this, I have this question for the audience here. Since we are all going to live old to this beyond the age of 90 or 100, and for you, 
when you reach the golden age of 90, what will be the assistive device or wearable device or robot that you would like to use? Thank you.